All right, we're live. See? All right. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so bad, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm surviving so far. Yeah, nah. I mean, it's it's you just kind of feel like you're just talking to whoever you're talking to. You kind of actually forget about you know the fact that people are actually able to watch. You kind of just I don't even really think about it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so this is my only my second live stream I've ever done, so it should it should go pretty smoothly. We'll see. I don't know if there's anyone watching just yet. I, I I'm not really sure, but whatever. If anyone's watching, go ahead and comment if you want. But uh, other than that, I know I've posted, I've talked about this uh, video a couple times. I haven't like heavily promoted it because I just don't do shit like that. But. Um, so yeah, if you didn't uh, see any of my posts or anything like that, we're doing. Uh, this is Scott Wilcox, by the way. Um, he's been watching my channel for a long time, so which is it's pretty cool. So it looks like there are yeah there are four people watching, so that's cool. Um, so yeah, this is the graveyard. Uh, graveyard. <laughs> See, I'm already fucking up. I was listening <laughs> to Graveyard earlier too. Graveworm uh, album album uh, discography ranking. There's 20 albums. Uh, we're gonna. We decided not to include the uh, EPs and splits and stuff like that, even though some of them are really cool. But we'll we'll still talk about them. But uh, yeah, twenty albums, kind of a hard hard thing to do. But uh, we'll we'll manage. Yeah, uh, for me, with a band like Grave Worm, I'm not. I love Grave Worm. I mean, obviously, I love Grave Worm. I have everything. You know, wearing the yeah. shirt. But yeah. <laughs> there's not there's not a whole lot of like. Uh, variation i guess between albums yeah. so right sometimes it's hard to parse out like what's yeah. better and whatnot but yeah. yeah we'll do our best but, yeah oh yeah yeah there's there's kevin right there i i don't know hey, can you up? see that can you see the stream uh on your end or can you see the um the feed the comments no yeah the comment oh you can't okay okay cool so i have to so there's there's Kevin right there. There's the man behind the band right there. Hey, all right. Yeah. Kevin, um, hopefully you don't want to kill me if I say something <laughs> bad about <laughs> a couple things. No, no. I mean, Ke he gets it. Like, uh, that's that's to me. That's kind of always been the appeal to Grave Worm. Like, I, I can listen to plenty of bands that are, you know, trying to reinvent themselves constantly and taking risks. And it's all about, I think, doing what you want to do and. That's exactly what he does. He's not about progression or trying to, you know, uh, trying to turn into something that's uh, that was never meant to be. That's why I like Grave Worm. I, you know, I like I like primitive, you know, black metal and stuff. I like some, I, you know, I like plenty of like progressive type stuff too. But you know, different uh, different moods. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of my favorite bands are are prog bands or prog metal bands. But yeah, I don't know. Grave Worm just hits a spot with me that. It, yeah, any any new gray worm is good. So <laughs> I'm always yeah. ready for a new one, and and Kevin yeah. pumps them out. So yeah, that's that's been like grave worms. Not that it's really very valid, but that's been like the consistent. Um, when there is criticism, it's people like they just don't. How come they haven't changed in in you know 30 years? Like, well, he doesn't want to. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're missing the point. You know, if you if you're not into that stuff, then you know, find a different band to listen to. I guess. Yeah, there's plenty of bands to choose from, so you can find something yeah. something else if you don't if you're not into this. Yeah. So if anyone's watching that isn't uh, familiar with Grave Worm, um, it's pretty much the 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 project of one guy. He's been doing this since you know roughly '92. Uh, started in um, Pennsylvania, I guess, which is it, I never really thought of it that way. Um, yeah, Pennsylvania. He lives in ohio now um am i missing something Did you, i can't remember if they were in were they in florida at one point i think virginia at one point virginia yeah virginia <laughs> i think that's where he's lived most of his life actually I oh okay. I was forgetting something yeah virginia which is cool um but yeah ohio ohio currently uh so yeah it's it's you know if you've never listened to grave worm it's i always kind of I always kind of described it as like uh, definitely like first wave black metal, Hellhammer and Celtic Frost, you know, mixed with a lot of doom. And then, you know, there's some thrash in there, some kind of all the all the cool genres are kind of mixed in there at some point. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's that's yeah. how I, I would describe it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard some people call them death metal. I never really heard a ton of death metal in there, but I'm, it's it's in there. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, those lines are, get so blurry sometimes that you know, black, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah, and those are just words. It's good. I mean, <laughs> yeah, nobody should make music with like the intention for it to fit in some category, and I think most musicians don't. Um, I've noticed a lot of the, like a lot of musicians or artists, whatever you want to call them, like. They almost don't like when you like try to put them in a box. I, I feel like they, yeah, it's a com kind of a common thing. Right. Um, do you want to start out with, I know this isn't really what we talked about. Do you want to start out just like talking about like the uh, splits and EPs and stuff? Do you want to just kind of knock that uh, out altogether or does that throw yeah, you off? Yeah, I can do that. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. That's um, these aren't all of them. Just had. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't have them all either. These are uh, just some I thought I'd single out. Um, there's yeah. also a, there's also a ton of seven inches with cool cool stuff on it, but I didn't. At some point, I had to draw a line. So <laughs> yeah, we can just and I didn't I didn't take I didn't really take notes on these splits and EPs, but you know we can just talk about them, and get them out of the way because I like a lot of these. Okay, cool. Uh, um, yeah, go I ahead, think Scott. my I think my favorite kind of run of the the splits is between 2006 <clears throat> excuse me in 2009 interesting uh the first one <clears throat> from conflict to conquest the Ooh. split with uh, suicidal winds oh cool um on time for time uh it's just the sound is freaking awesome it's it's raw, of course, as as most Grey Worm is, and dirty, but it, it just it's got a beefy sound to it that some of the earlier stuff just sounded a little thin and didn't the production yeah. wasn't quite there. Um, but there's only there's only five songs on it, and just top to bottom, it's friggin' awesome. You've got Night Hag, which is a classic. Yeah, it's um, a good song. And Betrothed to the Un Betrothed the Underworld is also a, a highlight on here. The 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 last song, um, yeah. I mean, for for their career up to this point, I felt like this was a highlight. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, that that's one that I would definitely recommend to people if you're new to yeah. Grave Horn. I don't even have that one. Su Suicidal Winds are a cool band too. Yeah, they. I like what was on here. I and I think I have something from them, but I haven't. Yeah, you know, you acquire shit and then you forget you have it, and it just sits there. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't have a ton <laughs> from them. I think I have like I think I have a tape from them, like a compilation. It's 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 pretty awesome, Black Thrash type stuff. I think they're really oh. good. Um. Yeah. This, so I don't have this, that one. You got okay. me beat already. <laughs> <laughs> ah, poser. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. Let's see. The next one. This was 2007, also on Time Before Time. Annihilation Declaration, a split with Hexari, a band I don't know a whole lot about. And um, that's one I don't have either. I, I've been wanting that one, actually. This one has um, Jim Kanye on drums, which is always a highlight. Always. Um, Zyklon is on vocals instead of Kevin, which he's he's good. But yeah. I just I associate Grave Worm so much with Kevin's vocals that it kind of yeah takes a little of the spice out of it for me. I do um, too. Yeah. The 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 recording it sounds a little like more rehearsal type, not yeah. quite as uh, full as the last split. Yeah. But the material is friggin' awesome. It's got Adversary yeah. of God on it, which is a classic. Yeah. And that they they play live when they play live, they usually always play the Adversary of God that I've seen anyway. Uh, Wolves of Isengard is on here that they've redone later. Yeah. Um, Defiant, which is another sweet song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just uh, an awesome, an awesome split if you can find it. I think this might. Uh, Kevin's re-released a lot of these like on comps um, from him, so yeah. I think this is one of you can get. I'm not. I didn't check into that. I'm sorry. Um, no. What did you What did you think about uh, Hex Siri, the other band? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I, I think they're pretty cool. I think they're from like Ma uh, Massachusetts or something like that. Um, they got female vocalist. 
Um, I, they, they don't have a lot of material. I don't know if they're still active. They, they have a full length. It's, it's pretty good, actually. I dig it. Um, I'd forgotten about them, but now that I remembered, uh, yeah, I've been trying to track down a copy of that full length. It's actually, okay. it's actually really good stuff. Yeah, I'll have to dive into it. Usually I get a split like this for one of the bands, and I yep. listen to the other band once, and if it doesn't grab me right away, I kind of forget about it. So that's probably what happened. Not that they're not good. It, it, it just No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's not what my focus was on. And this I'd one, say, I'd say check it out. Check out their full length. Yeah, you might like okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, some of these, this was one of them, uh, was actually Jim Kanye's copy. Oh. So... <laughs> That makes it that makes it more special to me too. Like, that's um, awesome. The the Kanye Fest that they did a couple of years in Cleveland. Um, the second one, they were selling a bunch of his collection, and a, a bunch of Grave Worm slits were in there. So that's where I got wow. that one. Wow. So do you live in Ohio? I don't think I ever asked. You. <laughs> oh no, I'm in Michigan, but Cleveland's like oh, four hours. It's like four hours away. It's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I've never been never been to Michigan or uh, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're really missing trees. out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, compared to where I live, I think anywhere is probably cooler. So <laughs> awesome. I don't know. Yeah. We've got Applebee's and you know <laughs> like everybody else, it's like I don't know. It's not that not yeah. that exciting, but yeah. Um yeah. I, that's cool. Uh and the next one, uh Grim Horizons split with mm. Wintress. Yeah. I got that. Well, I really, I really like the winter stuff, and I think, I think this is all they ever did, or maybe they had a demo besides this. Uh, I think the the material on this is the demo. I I believe. Is it okay? And I think yeah, I think that is the only recording. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a good one too. That was self released. At least the version I have is self released, two thousand nine. Yep. Um, and it's more of a, more of a doomy, um, melancholy sound for the whole thing. Um, yeah. As opposed to various moods, I really like Falling Dynasty and From the Shadows They Sliver, uh, the instrumental yeah. on that one. But it's all it's all good. I mean, there's six songs; they all roll. So, who's you might remember? Whose band is Wintress? He was in Grave Worm, right? It's, uh, it's not Blood. Who, I think it was oh, a guy that. Geez. Yeah. Yeah, I should know, and I don't. It's somebody who was involved <laughs> in Grave Worm, yeah. Yeah, no, I I should know too, but I, I do know, but I can't remember. But yeah, it's a guy that's. I think he's he he's done stuff with Grave Worm quite a bit over the years. By the way, I did not leave that comment for myself. I think that was my son. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured so. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Oh, you don't call yourself Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd slip that in there and uh, people wouldn't notice it was my name. <laughs> uh, let's see. What other splits did I have? Oh, the the EPs that I wanted to talk about. Cool. We'll go War Beast. You got War Beast, right? Hell yeah. That's one of my favorite Grave Worm recordings just overall. Awesome. So I can be cult. I got, I've got the 7-inch. Oh, shit. Yeah, I can't figure out this mirror shit. Okay, there we go. Nah, you're, <laughs> you're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, I love War Beast, man. Yeah, I mean the considering this was like barely after the debut, like it, it's just like so much. I like it so much more. I guess. Um, I think I do too. Don of the Dead on vocals. And uh, Kanye on drums, so it's basically <laughs> Nunslaughter it's, featuring it's, or Gra yeah. Grave Worm featuring Nunslaughter. Yeah, it basically um, is. That's what that's. Yeah, I love it for that reason too. It's a it's a little bit a little bit too much bass for me, but I mean, it sounds it's it still sounds awesome, and the songs are all cool, all really like uh, short, mm -hmm. in and out. Yeah. Wizards of War and Bloodlust were my were my favorites on here, but. Um, a lot of these songs have been redone later too, but True. this has been reissued by Kevin on a couple different discs. So it's not hard to find if you want to check it out. True. Yeah. Anything for you on that one? <clears throat> I have, so this isn't as cool, but I'm glad to have it in some format. I have this, um, just, he just made this, uh, it's just a CDR. Yeah, it's got it's cool because it's got the uh, command of Satan's blade on there too. So, yep, nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's War Beast is one of my favorite Grave Worm recordings just overall. It's like probably top five for me. Yeah, yeah. Just when I when I read what it was, I was like, no way. I yeah. gotta have that. <laughs> I've gotta oh, hear yeah. that. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah, what else you got? Uh Any I guess splits, or? the other I mean, there's other splits <laughs> and there's uh I guess I'll just whip them out. Yeah, you and you could just show stuff if you don't have a lot to say. Yeah, just show it. Yeah, split with arduous task on yeah. uh, horror pain or death. That's it, these are all really good. Um, yeah, I dig it. The uh, split with spun spun in darkness. This is a favorite of mine. That is also awesome. Horror pain or death. Um, split with uh, fetid zombie. I don't know if you're into fetid zombie, but I like him. Yeah, Mark Riddick. Yep. Yep. So of course you got a nice Riddick cover for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done a couple a uh, couple things for Grave Worm over the years. Yep. Um, and then beyond that, I just had the uh, the two early EPs, the Bestial Horrors and Carnivorous Monarchy. And I, I really like those both a lot. Yeah, me too. And I got just probably my last flex. I have those both on this. The uh, Oh yeah, the bonus the bonus disc that came with uh, Blood of the Pentagram yes. comes in a little film case. I love that. I really want that. Um, I'm gonna try to find one of those. It's awesome. Comes with a patch. I think I have the patch somewhere else, but oh, cool. Um, it has the Beach of Hordes EP 2002, Carnivorous Monarchy EP <laughs> 2003, and then ten unreleased songs spanning 2002 to 2010. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the Bisho Hordes EP, considering how early it was, it was like a huge step up in sound. Yeah. Just, just a full sound and more, more energy. Um, you don't really say progression with Grave Worm, but no, the uh, the songwriting was much more catchy and memorable on this. Yeah. Um, and then Carnivorous Monarchy, not. Kind of a step back in production. It sounds kind of muffled, but uh, still friggin' great material. Um, yeah. Joel, Joel Grind played drums on that, which is a nice yeah. little trivia. Yeah, I always thought um, that was a cool cameo. <laughs> oh, maybe, okay, so since Kevin's in the chat, maybe you can answer this. I met a lot guys that says Blood is the vocalist on this, and I don't think so. <laughs> it sounds like Kevin to me. I don't know. I, I think that's probably yeah incorrect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So cool. yeah, so, those are kind of the non-full length stuff I had written down. Okay. Just to take a second and say hello to Angry Fist. Glad to see you here. Hey, Kevin Full Metal us. Ginger. You do you know Kevin uh, Scott? Do you know Full Metal Ginger? I do. Yes. Okay. I figured so. Yeah, he's a good buddy of mine. Okay, uh, so... Oh, Kevin said he did yeah, vocals on that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you saw that. So, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I can <laughs> psych myself out of it. It's like, well, maybe not. I don't know, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His vocals are pretty distinctive, so... Yeah, because, well, Blood has done vocals on on various things, but I don't... He's good, but yeah, I don't, I don't like his style as much. Um, I also, though... Uh, I also prefer Kevin's vocals to even like Dawn of the Dead. Like I love Nunslaughter, but I don't, you know, I don't need to hear him doing vocals for Grave Worm. It's cool, uh, you know, on occasion though. But yeah, you know. yeah, for an EP, yeah. it was it was cool. Well, that yeah, that leads me to well, that'll come up later. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another okay, question I'll... I had about who actually did vocals. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got a couple things. I guess I'll show. Um, so I do have the B Seal Hordes EP, and I I guess I. I I guess I couldn't find it because I don't have it here, but uh, I have uh, I have a CDR of Carnivorous Monarchy EP, and I like that one a lot. Like you said, Joel Grind on drums, which is which is cool. I've got I just have those two EPs, so then I got some splits. You already showed this, the Grim Horizons Winter. It's worth showing again. Yeah, and you already showed the Arduous Task split. And the rest of these you didn't show, so that's cool. I got so this is probably my favorite. Um, 
definitely my favorite picture disc of all time. Maybe, and one of my favorite splits too. I don't know if you have this, the Nun Slaughter Grave Worm split. I can't let you outdo me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's, awesome. it's amazing. I, I absolutely love it. It It's funny and it's cool that they, uh, you got, so you got Grave Worm covering Nun Slaughter and Nun Slaughter covering Grave Worm. So I thought yeah. that was cool. I like when they do that on those kind of splits. Totally. And then I have, if you don't have this, you got to get this, the uh, Occult Creatures split with Saphinus. Uh, I do have it. I didn't pull it out. Okay. Good, good. As long as you have it, that's all that matters. Yep. <laughs> this came out on Fistbang, which is a, um, a European label. I can't remember where they're from, Poland or Italy. Um, perfect matchup, though. Saphinus are perfect for a split with Grey Farm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I, actually, they're one of the few bands I use... When I when I tell people about Grave Worm, they've never heard them. I always say they sound like Saphinus, Nun Slaughter, Goat Lord, you know. And then I've got On the Wings of Death split with uh, Apocalyptic Raids, another nice. awesome band. And just two more. Then I have this uh, four way split came out on Iron Bonehead, I think. Um, so it's got Durkada, which. Wherever. <laughs> Durkada, right. which everyone knows I'm a big fan of. Uh, Witchburner, cool German uh, black thrash band. And then it's got uh, Sa uh, Sadomaniac. And yeah, this is <laughs> this is a good split. It's it's super raw, of course, like most black metal splits, but definitely worth tracking down. That's cool. Yeah, I don't have that one. Is that like a double seven inch or it's all in one? It's all on one, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then one of my favorites... Uh, things that I own from Grave Worm um, for various reasons. I like the other band uh, split with Thronium or Thronum from Poland, uh, who are, I think, a very underrated black metal band. Um, yeah, from what I've, yeah, I really like what I've heard. I definitely yeah. need to hear more of them. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're definitely underrated. Um, <laughs> and then a lot of people know how I whine about when I buy something that comes with extra stuff, I always have to use it. But with this one, I just couldn't. I just couldn't because I didn't want to ruin anything here. It's got a really cool. It's got a cool sticker. Oh, and nice! It's got, and it's got a little pin, and I just cannot. I just can't use it because I'm so afraid <laughs> I'll lose the pin or something. So yep. this is one of the few times when I don't take stuff out. Uh, oh, so are you one of those that you get a box with like a shirt in it, and you can't take the shirt out, or you do take the shirt out? No, I, I have to. Yeah, I have okay. to use it. Yeah, if it's yeah, got a patch, I, I want to use the patch. How? Why would you buy a patch just to just to leave sitting in a box? You know. Logically, I agree, and I don't, and I don't. I wear the shirts and all that, but there's part yeah. of me that thinks you shouldn't. You should leave it in the plastic and I have let it I have sit there until you're dead, and your son throws it in a freaking dumpster. <laughs> I have done it. I, I yeah, I wouldn't say I've never, but yeah. Um. So that yeah, that's all the non full length stuff I have. So uh do you wanna show your number twenty? Moving on to the all right, albums. here we go. I got I I I don't want to get negative right away. But... Nah, that's okay. All right. My number twenty is <laughs> Funeral Empire. Jesus. There we go. Uh March third, two thousand nine, time before time records. Mm-hmm. I think this is my least favorite because it felt like up to this point that they're taking steps and getting better and better and better. And then there was a gap. It was like 2005 was the previous album. Then they did all those awesome splits. And then this came out. And my first thought was, did they use all the good songs on the splits? Um, it's super long. It's like almost an hour long. It's a little um, long. Yeah. There's too many songs and some of them are too long. Uh, I really only have like a few, like Prepare the Coffin I like a lot. Dragonflight is my favorite on the album. Yeah, um, I like it. Tower of Shadows is really good. But for 14 songs and like, I think it's 57 minutes. Uh, there's too little meat on the bone for me. It just makes it feel really long and like you're just kind of waiting for it to be over. Um, gotcha. And that's one of the, you know, I generally like 
all the Grey Worm release, releases is just what I like more. This is one I don't really pull out much because I feel like I could listen to two Grey Worm albums I like better in the time it takes to listen to this one. So that's, that's my true. number 20. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I actually have that one higher up on my list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <You just Okay. laughs> yeah. So for me, number 20, um, and this is kind of unfair, I, I but I had to put it there. Um, it's from 2011 Netherfiend. And I'm just putting it there because I don't have it. And I've barely, I think I've listened to it. I don't even remember where I've, I've listened to it. Like, I think only one time. So I just, I just haven't had, you know, time to spend with it. <laughs> But yeah. Okay. Um, I just unsubbed. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, How dare to... you say that about another piece? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's really good. I, I I should I probably should have just left it out because um it's just kind of it's really unfair to put it at number twenty. But I just had to just because I haven't had time with it. Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, so that was self. Well, I guess you could say self release. That's released under his Funeral Empire label. Oh, Kevin just says it was recorded before all those splits. Okay. That kind of makes more sense to me. <clears throat> that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now your turn for number 19. All right. My number 19 is Dark Souls of Hell from uh, Barbarian Wrath, May 2002. Um, the, the, the thing I like best about this is Kevin saying on this one, when he didn't on the debut, this is the second album. Um, uh, still production is, you know, I'm not, I don't want like Cradle of Filth production, but this is kind of thin and weak sounding. Um, so again, not one I pull out super often. Uh, a lot of the War Beast songs are on here, but they sound better on War Beast. Um, it seems like a continuation of the debut, um, but the songwriting still isn't quite there yet for me. <clears throat> but you know, besides, I'm gonna I'm gonna say besides Fear Empire, all these I like. I wouldn't tell anyone not to listen to these, but if I have yeah, to rank them, yeah. which you know that's what we're doing, this yeah. is near the bottom. So, yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, I I like every single one, but just some more than others. But there's right. honestly, there's no Grave Worm album that I will like say put in a box or something or like never listen to it again. Like I always revisit every literally everything that I have, I'll revisit it. Maybe it's only once every five years, but I still do I still return to it, you know, constantly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm glad I'm not <laughs> pissing off the man quite yet. <laughs> so for me number 19 i'm also being a little bit unfair here because i i didn't get the 2021 and 2022 releases until recently uh i just kind of i don't i'm, I'm not really sure why but uh also i'm looking for my coffee <laughs> um anyways it's gonna be sorcerer's lair okay oh my god it's sitting right in front of me so the Sorcerer's Lair from 2021. I was just listening to it earlier. I actually really like this one. Um, I think it probably deserves, even just on one listen, I think it deserves to be bumped up a few. But I, don't know, I, I just, I, 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 I don't know. I just couldn't do it. Um, so this has, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the dude's name, but the current drummer that 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 they have is this isn't the first time he did did something with grave worm but uh his drumming just adds a nice touch i'm sure you'd probably agree yeah um, sure. yeah his drumming just kicks ass it, it brings like a, a a new dimension to grave worm and uh yeah I, I i wouldn't mind hearing him on you know all the albums coming forward because he just he just brings a cool sound that isn't on all grave worm albums but uh so yeah number 19 uh sorcerer's lair from 2021 okay Well, there's a theme for me. Uh, I'm sorry to hate hate the past, but a lot of my lower ones are the the older ones. You know, flying in the face of cult, like all you know, the demos are the best. That's not how yeah. I feel. So no, I don't 18, always feel that way. 
Ancient Storms of War, the debut, uh, August 2000. Um, I thought, interestingly, the uh, the track listing is the same as the demo at the Gates of Armageddon from 1995, which I haven't heard. I don't know if it's even available. I didn't um, know that. And then there were two two demos following that that had all the same tracks but split into two demos. So I don't know if it's the same recording. I don't know, but I just thought that was – it was interesting that those songs were so old. Yeah. Um, now, Metal Archives again. We'll see. We'll we'll get fact check from Kevin. Says Tyrant on vocals, which is Don of the Dead. It does not. I mean, it might be Don of the Dead, but he doesn't sing like Don of the Dead on this. If it is him, so I was curious about that. Okay. Um, he it, the the vocals are more like I don't know more generic than Don's normally. So I don't know if he was just trying to do something different, um, but it's it's interesting. Um, th it's this is one that feels long. It's only forty five minutes, but it feels long because there's so many songs, and they're they're all kind of in the same lane. Um, I do really like "Descend in the Underworld." It's got an awesome catchy chorus. I like "Rise from the Crypt." Um, Cadaveric Dementia, which I thought I thought it was interesting because it was a it's a really fast one with like gore lyrics, which Graveworm doesn't. I mean, besides this, I don't know ever, if they ever did. Um, yeah. And then the title track, I really like the title track, and they obviously they do too because they've re-recorded it twice. Um, so yeah, I would say it's an interesting album in the discography. Um, not one that I would recommend to like somebody who hasn't heard great work, great one before, but yeah. Yeah. I probably wouldn't either. I, I do like that one a lot. Um, I would have been fine if, okay. if, if it was like 30 <laughs> or 35 minutes. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't think I knew that. I don't know where that, yeah. Somebody, somebody put that on metal archives. So I didn't, it didn't sound like him to me, but you know, he, what he, you know, he did, sing on war beast right after that so i was like well maybe it's him i don't know yeah i i, I guess i thought it was him but i agree it doesn't sound like him <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense because it isn't but yeah so my number 18 which again these this, these bottom ones are really unfair for certain reasons and i didn't think about it until i didn't think about it until today um but i'm being really unfair to the new albums uh Honestly, I think if I waited to do this video another year, I think these, the last like four or five albums would have been much higher than they are. But I, some of these I just haven't had time to spend with. So um, number 18 in the forest of lurking evil. Um, it's really good. I was just listening to it today. This has, yeah, so this is self-released again. Same lineup as, you know, uh, the last three or four years. It's got the same guy on drums, which is, which is awesome. Um, yeah, really like this one a lot. Just haven't had a lot of time to spend with it. So, yeah. This is interesting. Our, our lists are super different. <laughs> they are, which is good. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, we were talking about it earlier, like, besides a few things, like, I feel like most of these albums could jump anywhere in the list, at, depending on my mood or yeah. how they haven't hit me in a certain time. Like, they're, they're all good. So, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to continue hating on the past. And I'm going to go to uh, Into Battle, Barbarian Wrath, 2003. Cool. Um, this, this, to me, this one shows the songwriting getting stronger. Um, the, the, the highlights are starting to overtake the like, meh, okay songs. Um, yeah. Strangely, it sounds worse to me. Like the production sounds worse. It sounds a little weaker than the. It's a rough the production. Movie. But uh, yeah, this is this to me is like all right, we're getting there, we're getting to where it, the grave worm I like. This is like we're on the path. Um, yeah, I got abyss uh, for highlights. I have abyss avenger. I shall lead the legions of hell. Brandish the weapons of hellish onslaught. I mean, come on, what could you get a fucking cooler song title than that? That's true. <laughs> um, and as a as a bonus, it's not listed on the CD, but I think all but one of the songs from uh, 
Beach of Horrors and Carnivorous Monarchy here are also on here as bonus tracks. So you get all those too. True. So yeah. Yeah. Solid. Solid. Not 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 in my top, but solid. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, that Barbarian Wrath is a really cool record label. Yeah, well it was. It's not didn't the guy die or something? He died, but I I believe his wife is still running it, I think. Oh, is she? Okay. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. Yeah, she's always been involved. Like, um, she has her own label, which was like a sub label of Barbarian Wrath called the Witch's Brew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got, she has tons of experience in, you know, doing label stuff. So, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure she took over Barbarian Wrath, okay. which is, which is awesome. You know, yeah. keep it going. So, number 17. I cannot believe <laughs> my stuff got out of order. Um, <laughs> Self-released again, we have uh, Ancient Darkness Arise from okay. uh, 2018. <clears throat> and this is another one where like, I, I, I wanted to put higher, but you know, like you said, every, everything has to go somewhere. You can't, right. you can't have like five number threes, you know? So um, I, I guess I'd say I've spent, even though I've had that for a good couple of years, I think I've spent less time with that than, uh, than I have with some other stuff. So okay. it's kind of unfair, kind of unfair. I feel like, but I had to put it at 2018 or <laughs> number, <laughs> number uh, 17. Well, I, I put off ranking these as long as I could. And I did it this afternoon and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then right before we started, I'm looking at it. I was like, what the fuck? No, that's yeah. gotta be higher than that. So you know, it's just yeah. whatever. It's all, arbitrary yeah it is all right now i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop uh slamming the early albums and i'm not slamming this either but it's my what am i at 16 infernal minions june 2013 on hell's headbangers um this one if you're going to say Grey Worm ever went like ex a little experimental, I would say it's this one. There's a lot more keyboards than usual. And I didn't like it. <clears throat> Maybe it's just it didn't sound like Grey Worm to me. Um, also, this was... Blood of the Pentagram was my first Grey Worm, and I freaking loved it. And then there was another thing in, in between there, but... I didn't even know about that at the time. So to me, this was the follow-up to Blood of the Pentagram, and I was psyched, and I got yeah. it, and I was like, I don't know. This isn't Blood of the Pentagram. Um, I really like um, Nocturnal Inquisition, the opener. Yeah. And Mistress of Blood and Fire, the 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 closer. I really like those a lot. Um, the rest of it, um, to me, ranges from, like, okay to sometimes a little bit annoying with keyboards um i don't like the cover either but you know whatever but that does play yeah. into you know but like, it's not i don't know it's it's okay it's okay i thought as like as wide release as grave worm ever gets with 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 like being on hell's headbangers like i was i was sad that this was the one that followed up blood of the pentagram i thought it should have been nothing beat but yeah gotcha yeah I mean, check it out, but just because it wasn't for me, it might be for you. It's true. I, I actually have that one ranked fairly high. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, number 16, here we have one that I don't own. I don't think I do, anyways. Uh, I'm going to go with 2005's Under the Banner of War. Um, okay. That came out also on Barbarian Wrath. Uh, you can definitely feel a similarity with the Barbarian Wrath Grave Worm albums. You can tell they kind of all were recorded back to back. Um, yeah, uh, again, that's another one where it's kind of unfair to put because I just I don't own it. And I have heard it a number of times. I was listening to it earlier today. But since I don't own it, I just um, haven't absorbed it as well. So that's why I had to put it at number 16. Yeah. I'll get it eventually. Oh yeah, you can't get everything, sadly. No, yeah. And then and then you do get it, and then you forget you have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that happens. All right, uh, 
I we I thought we had the same opinion on this, but I th don't think it is anymore. My number 15, 2019 is Dread Knight. Friggin' awesome cover, man. I mean, you got Mark Riddick cover. Yeah. And that's kind of where I run out of things to say. I don't know. This one, a little bit off topic. I'm a wrestling fan. And there's a community of wrestling nerds where they like to rate they rate matches by on a, like a five star scale. So one year there was this tournament we're all excited about in Japan, and then all the matches were fine. There was there wasn't anything wrong with them, but they weren't great. And someone came up with the term, "I'll give it a gentleman's three stars," because I don't have anything to say about it. <laughs> it's not it's not bad, but uh, it doesn't do anything for me. That's where I am with Dread Knight. It's it's fun to listen to, but I can't even to pick out. I Visions of the Black Mirror I really like, but other than that, it's hard to pick out any highlights on it. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I am with that one. It's it's fun. I listen to it, but yeah, it's not it's not in the upper tier for me. Yeah, you might it might grow on you more. I I like I said today earlier. I. Um, I was listening to that today for the first time in a year or two, and I actually liked it a lot more today than I did before. So, okay, who knows? Yeah, yeah mine was knows? the other way. I, I thought I liked it a lot, and then I realized I don't know. <laughs> today, yeah, at least the the day I listened to it, I was like, eh, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Um, so my number fifteen, I bet you this is going to be your next one, but I could be wrong. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing this is going to be next for you. <laughs> but uh, so 2015, um, 2016. Sorry about that. We got into the dungeon. Self released. Would be again. direct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, this one had to grow on me as well. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't love this one when it came out, but I, I liked it more and more as I've listened. Um, I know when it came out, a lot of people criticized the the cover art, and you might too. But um, I actually really like the Cam Lee cover arts that he did for grave worm um this one this cover art to me it totally works because it reminds me of like a like like one of those like 70s like fantasy horror movies or something it reminds me of that when i first saw it i, I, I kind of thought it was weird too but it, i actually really like the cover art um you know the more the more more time i've i've spent with it um yeah this album's super raw there's no there's no drummer on this one which that's not super uncommon for great form um sometimes the drum machine sounds better than others i would say on on various albums yeah uh, and on this one he you could tell he kind of figured out much better how to use program drums so they sound they sound actually like pretty good on here on some of the great worm albums the drum programming i don't like but uh you know anyone who listens to black metal is usually comfortable with program drums so um, uh, a drummer would have been really cool on this album, but uh, yeah, I like it pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't pay attention to drums as much as a lot of people. Um, oh, okay. So usually the drum machine doesn't bother me so much, but I just, yeah. I do admire the like waiting around. If you need to wait around to get a drummer to record, and he's just like, fuck it, I got these songs, I'm going to do them. I, I really yeah. like that kind of spirit too. Yeah, me too. Um, so yeah, you predicted correctly. My number 14 is also <laughs> into the dungeon. Um, I can see, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy into the cover. I can see how it has its charm. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of Cam Lee's art, That that's yeah. just me. Um, yeah. I think, um, I really like Go to the Beast on this. Yeah. I like Conjure by Nightfire a lot. Um, I think the problem with this one for me is it was the follow-up to spoiler alert, my favorite all-time Grey Worm album. <laughs> and usually when I listen to this, it's like I listen to that and then I listen to this right after that and it don't it doesn't compare to me. So I probably need to listen to this like in isolation to really give it a fair shot. So this might deserve yeah. to go up, but that was my feelings on the day I finished my list. So Yeah. That's a good point. Taking into consideration, if you're comparing that to, um, <laughs> you know, to the album before it, that, that makes it a tough, yeah, a tough comparison. Yeah. 
So number 14, I have an album that I, I actually need to get a real copy of this. I just have a CDR that, that he sent to me. But uh, yeah, 20 or 2002, we got uh, Dark Souls of Hell. Okay. See, so Barbarian Wrath again, which like I said, all those Barbarian Wrath albums kind of, they, they sound, you know, pretty similar to each other. Not to say it's a bad thing. Um, they might be the most raw Grave Worm albums, I think, were those uh, Barbarian Wrath albums. And again, I, you know, I could be a little bit wrong about this album, too, because this is another one that I've, I've, yeah, I've listened to it numerous times that I have not really spent as much time with this, which always makes me wonder if I had listened to it a bunch more, if it, if it would rank higher. So I don't know how you feel about this one, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't put it higher than number 14 today. Dark Souls of Hell? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have that. I have that at 19, so... <laughs> Oh, that's right. Sorry, I it's, forgot. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I'm, n I'm not 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 saying it sucks or anything. It's just right. It's near the bottom for me. Yeah. All right, where are we? Thirteen. I've yeah. got this. The brand new emissary of darkness. Yeah. Came out in August. Um, and this one too. I feel like this should be higher, but. Yeah. It's the, you know, it's the new one. I haven't heard it as much. Um yeah. it's really good. It is uh, it is really good. Keys of the Kingdom, the opener freaking rules. Um the title track um the lead guitar throughout like if he doesn't do it much, but every once in a while there'll be a song where there's like lead guitar over the top and it's really simple, but it's like a different tone and really just adds a lot to the song and that's that's a perfect example of, uh, on this album uh, yep. the empty of darkness song yeah um it's got savage damage from blackfire redone which is a sweet song so that's cool it is great song um, yeah upon my return the sequel to tower of shadows which was one of my favorites from fear empire the album i didn't that was my bottom album right um yeah it's just really good one thing that I don't know if it's a something on my copy, but did you notice the drums going out of time on this? Not like near no, I didn't notice. Um, I've only listened to that album one time so far, though. Okay, yeah. it was like between like the third and fifth song. It se seemed like there were like glitches or like the drums were like off. I don't know. Oh. It kind of threw me off, but maybe that was just I'm, me. I'm gonna have to pay close attention next time I look. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have to listen closer, but. It's it's really good. I I totally recommend getting it. It's the yeah. brand new album. Yeah, I'd say so too because, like I said, I have only listened to it one time, and I have, you know, I haven't even gotten to it yet, which is a good sign. It you know technically should be lower since I've only listened to it once, but I, that one listen I liked it that much to where oh, it's cool. fairly high. Yeah, um, number thirteen. I have another CDR of two thousand threes into battle so this is my favorite of i don't know why i showed it for that long yeah look at that <laughs> this is um this is my favorite of the uh, barbarian wrath albums i believe um it's still you know i don't know what it is uh, that i like more about it it's still kind of that same raw production and it's still super primitive but i guess i just like it a little bit more than the other two or whatever two or three that came out on that label okay yeah All right. Uh, I'll, number 12, I've got Sorcerer's Lair from 2021. I dig so it a lot, months. yeah. Um, this is, to me, like a meat and potatoes Grave Worm album. It's like, yeah. if you like Grave Worm, you'll like this. Yeah. Um, it's not going to, well, you can kind of say that about a lot of albums. Like, it's not going to convince anybody else, but... Um, it's all it's all strong songs. There aren't a whole lot of like, oh, this one this one you know stands out from the album. They're all good. Um, the it, uh, I did I did make a note of the final war, and when I saw that, I was like, oh no, <laughs> like this is gonna be yeah. boring. But it's awesome. I mean, it, it's not like it goes through a bunch of movements or anything, but it just is. It's through. 
Um, yeah, I mean, one, once, at least for me, once you get past a certain point of like the, the early stuff, which it looks like you like more than I did, you pretty much are going to like, if you like Grey Worm, you're going to like whatever they do past like 2009. Yeah, so this this falls right in there. It's good. Check it out. Available now. Go to Bandcamp. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's another one that I've only listened to once so far, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, so my number twelve is 2022's. Oh. Yeah, the newest one, Emissary of Darkness. And like you said, this probably could be ranked higher, but it's it just came out, so it's still it's still really new. Yeah, um, only giving it one listen. And like you, like you pointed out, the uh, the leads that he that he added were really cool. Uh, I imagine he'll probably do that more from now on because I thought it worked really well. Just simple, simple uh, melodic leads that just they're not they're not leads to be a lead. They're just adding to the song and they kind of help the atmosphere. Um, like you said, they're kind of how did you put it? Hey man, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I, I don't know what's I can going hear you. on. Uh, try now. Yeah, I can't hear you. Huh. Okay. Um. Well, let's just let's just continue on. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was my uh, that was my number thirteen. Can I mute my? All right. My audio is coming through. Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. All right. We'll just go then. Uh, let's see. 11. I've got Ancient Darkness Arise, 2018. This is the original release, just in like a sleeve. Yeah. Um, and then this is the 2020 re recording with live drums. And this might be weird, but I prefer the drum machine version. Um, maybe because I was used to it, but once I heard the live drums, it sounded like it was just too busy. <laughs> like I, I preferred the simplicity. Um, and I get it. Why would you record with live drums and just do the same thing? That doesn't make any sense. But I just I like the original one better. Um, my highlights on this were Dreadful Vice. Uh, let's see. Fallen Star, which had that like weeping guitar that I was talking about before. Um, yeah. Grim Troll is on here, which is an old seven inch track that deserved to be on a full length. Um, yeah. yeah, really good. Really good. Um, I don't know if the drum machine version is available and probably nobody would care, but me, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Check it out with live drums. Cool. I mean, can you hear me yet? No. Can't hear you. Okay. Okay, so my number... Let's see, where are we at? Number 11. Oh my god, I can't believe these got out of order. Do you want me to leave and come back? See if that works? Yeah, go ahead and try that. Yeah. Okay. I'm assuming everyone else can hear me, though. So, number 10, we're going to do... We'll do uh, funeral rites. This is wow. Sorry about my shitty, shitty video. <laughs> um, this is yeah. This is 2020. Uh, one of the newer albums, self-released. Another one that I still haven't had a lot of time to spend with. I hate. I, I really wish I'd have, have kind of crammed these a little bit better. I, so I've listened to this one time, and it's it's really good. This is actually my favorite, you know, of the newer albums. So. I mean, for an album that, you know, from 2020 that I listened to one time for me to put it at uh, number 10 is, I think that's saying a lot. Let me get Scott back in here. Hey, back. sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yep. Oh, cool. I, I thought that might help, but I, I don't know why. So yeah, I just, I just did funeral rites as my uh, number 10. I was pointing out how it's another one that I've only listened to one time, but for putting it at number 10 on one listen is, is it's saying a lot, I think. Yeah. 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 Right on. All right. I've got 
I'm staring at paper like an idiot. Under the Banner of War. Here we go. 2005. Uh, this was also Barbarian Wrath. Yes. This is my favorite of the Barbarian Wrath, for sure. Um, recording is dry, but way more powerful. Um, it's... This is this is where it came like it's it's harder to pick standouts because like the songwriting has just risen to a level that everything is good. Yeah. Um, we've got this is oh okay sorry I was doing these in order so I was ju- sort of doing it in progression so I wrote strongest album so far so <laughs> up to 2005 I thought this was the strongest um, yeah. So many good songs on here. We got the Spiral Tower, uh, Lair of Cerberus, which is kind of moody and then builds up. Um, Rise of the Gort Lord, which is a, a classic. Yeah. War Slot. Uh, Triumph and Exile is like kind of a kind of an epic ish one that stretches out, but doesn't ever get boring. Um, yeah. So under the banner war, that's my number ten. Cool. My number ten is going to be. From, let's see, when did this come out? From 2017, self-released, or on the Funeral Empire label, I should say. Got The Shadowlands. Um, this album is really cool. I actually, for some reason, when this one came out, I actually, I kind of didn't like it. Almost, I, I don't know, I didn't like it really at all at first. And so I kind of shelved it for a while. And every time I've listened to it ever since then, I actually like it more every single time. Um, what's cool about this one is, it is, this one kind of, you might agree. Uh, this one kind of stands out a little bit. Like, yeah. There's some stuff on here that he did that, you know, like, I really like the samples. Like, he added the, you know, kind of witchy sounding samples and stuff. And I thought that was thought that was a cool touch. I asked him if he w- was ever going to do that again. And he said he he said he liked adding the samples and he's probably going to do it some more, too. But, oh, um, cool. yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like those samples gave it a, a nice kind of uh, nice witchy touch. And I don't know what to really what to say about the songwriting. I'm not sure. I don't remember what 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 I didn't like, you know, the first time I listened to it. But uh, yeah, every literally every time I listen to this now, I like it more every single time. So it's a good sign. Not saying that he needs to switch things up on every album, but it you know it was nice on that one. It, I think it worked, and that one I think was pretty well received too. I think I've seen reviews for it and stuff. It seemed like other people liked it quite a bit as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot too, and it's it's way higher on my list, so I like it a lot too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I wanted it to be higher. I wanted that to be like a top five or six, but it just it just for me it just didn't quite make it in there. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Number nine. We're getting there. Abyss Sorcery, twenty fourteen. Cool. Uh, live drums on this one. We got Ash Thomas. From, I don't know, a million bands. Shed the Skin Ash, probably yeah. is the most, the most uh, prominent right now. Um, he's awesome. I, I love that guy. Yeah, he's too. great. Yeah. But like Vladimir's, are you into Vladimir's? Yeah. 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 Really cool. Um, and then Mark Stoffer from Twisted Tower Dyers on the other half, uh, yes. doing doing drums. Uh, we got just kind of a you know when. I don't mind the drum machine, but usually when you have live drums, there's just kind of an extra energy to it. Totally. That really boosted this for me. Yeah. Um, we got, let's see, what did I, what did I write down as highlights? Certain Doom. The title track, I really like it. It was menacing. It had a nice atmosphere to it. Um, yeah. The Sun is Lost to Us was kind of a, a, a really doomy one that I really liked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, this is good all the way through. Um, it is. Yeah. So there we go. Abyss Sorcery. Yeah, I like that one a lot. <clears throat> so my number my number eight is an album we already talked about. And this is another one that uh, I didn't love at first, but I was listening to it over the last couple of days. And for some reason, I like it so much more now. So number eight, we got Dread Knight from 2019. The cool uh, Mark Reddick cover art released on the Funeral Empire label. This was, I think this is the first album to have the current drummer that he has. I think this is the first time he uh, did stuff for Grave Worm. I won't try to pronounce his name because he's got a, he's got a pretty long, uh, yeah, I have no idea. unpronounceable name. Starts <laughs> with an S. Awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. Like his, he's, 
that dude is a really good drummer and adds, I think his drumming adds a ton to the music. Um, I'm, I'm glad that he has stayed. I hope, I mean, if he stayed, if he's on every Grave Worm album from this point on, I think that would be fine. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, like I said, I don't know what it was. Sometimes I'm just weird when I listen to something one time. Some, th- some things just don't click with me, but uh, I like this one a lot now as to where, you know, I was unsure about it for a while. Yeah, I like, I mean, that's another, when I was talking about not being ferried into the dungeon because always pairing it with something else. Yeah. Dread Knight by itself, I really liked a lot. But when I was, you know, going through this and taking notes and re- listening to everything, I it didn't it didn't measure up to everything else for me. But you know, yeah, it, in in a week I could listen to it and totally shoot it up in the top five. You know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, it it grew on me. I think, and recently it grew on me. So it, it could happen to you too. All right, number eight. I've got Night Creatures from August 2020, the second album released in 2020. Yes. Uh, originally, well, at least on Bandcamp, the it was called the Spectra Bloom originally, uh, but then it was changed to Night Creatures, I guess. Um, this to me is like part two of Funeral Rites, which was the the earlier 2020 release. Um, the first song, Rise of the Vampire, is fucking great. Uh, and the, the last song, At the End of Time, is another great one with some of those those cool, like, simple solo lines I was talking about. Yeah. Um, to me, those were the two best songs that he did in 2020. But as an album, I liked the other one more. But this is, I mean, this is, it's splitting hairs. Like, this is freaking great. Yeah, uh, I'd, re- I'd recommend great. it to anybody. Um, yeah, one one uh, just kind of random nerd note. It's mastered really quiet. The disc is. If you get it on Bandcamp, it also comes with a remastered version that's sort of like beefed up a bit. So, oh, that's right. Order the disc on Bandcamp, and then you get both both versions, and you won't worry about it. But yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it does it has two versions of the album on on the CD? Doesn't it? Oh, is it on? Is it on the CD too? Oh, okay, maybe not. No, it's not. I thought it was for some reason. No, I'm looking at my copy. I guess not. Oh, okay. <clears throat> really cool cover art too. I like. It. I like that. Yeah, thing. I do too. Nice and creepy. Yes. So number five. Nope. Number seven. Um, I I thought this one would have ranked a little higher, but. I've been listening to some other stuff, you know, in the last couple weeks. So kind of bumped this one down. This, this used to be my favorite actually. Um, so, uh, 2010s, uh, blood of the pentagram, like you were talking about. Nice. Yeah. I like this one a lot. This was in the hell's headbanger years. Was this the first one to come out on hell's? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Or that's what I remember it. Um, so this one had, uh, Zyklon on bass, and then it had blood, who's a guy that, you know, his blood has came and went over the years quite a few times. Um, <laughs> I feel like he has almost like an open door policy or something. I, like, yeah, <laughs> he'll come back. He'll come back. He'll be gone. He'll come back. He'll be gone. Um, but so he plays, what does he play on this? He does. Oh yeah. He didn't, he didn't really do too much. He added some keys to this. I think that's all he did, but uh, okay. I like, I actually like, I think you might've said you don't like it, but I kind of like grave worm with keys. Okay. Yeah. I do I mean, sometimes. I wouldn't want to hear just... it too much, but yeah, yeah. sorry. No, no fine. Yeah. I don't know. I I think it's because I'm a I'm a big fan of like symphonic black metal, so I don't know about you. I used to be. That was like all, yeah. that was the black metal I liked for a long time, and now I yeah. think I burned out on it. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't now mind I... hearing keys on on. You know, if he wants to put keys on more albums, I'd be okay with it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's my uh, not me. Seven. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I wouldn't want to hear it like on every song, and I wouldn't want to hear it like heavily used. But uh, yeah, I do like yeah. when they show up. Well, mine. This was a. This was. Was this your bottom? I think it was. 
Number seven, Nether Fiend. Yeah. 2011. This was, as far as I know, mail order only limited to 100. I got mine like on Discogs or something. I think I don't think there's a disc available right now. There's not. Okay. I would say basically this is, to me, Blood of the Pentagram Part 2. Um, I think it's at least as good or close to as good. So it's kind of a shame that like nobody has it or nobody talks about it. Um, yeah, this got so many good songs, but in the gardens of eternity, I really like creature and prisoners of the night are my, my favorites on this. Um, I guess basically if you like, uh, 2010 on grave worm you're gonna like this man like it's right in there um and the fact that you can't get it makes it even cooler right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm i'm so bummed i don't have that um, it'll turn out I'm, it, it will yeah i saw it on discogs one time and i meant to grab it and then i i didn't and then i went back to get it and it was gone but it'll, it'll show back up yeah maybe it might have been me i might have sniped it from you <laughs> you might have <laughs> Um, so my number number six is I thought I would rank I thought this would be my number one for the longest time as well, but uh, I don't know if it ever was. I think this was my number two for a long time. But Ancient Storms of War, I have this cassette version. Okay. Um, it's uh, Time Before Time put out this uh, put out this tape, but it was I think um, they didn't put it out initially. I think it was Barbarian Wrath. Uh, yeah, they did the CD. Yeah. Okay. The CD. Yeah. So this came out in 2000, but it was the songs were written and I think recorded in what 95 or 96. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I like this album a lot. It could be maybe a little bit shorter, like you said, but it's cool. You know, it's got. So who who is on vocals on this one? Since it's not, it's not Dawn of the Dead. I can't remember who he said it was. <laughs> and it's got so blood. Yeah, blood's on bass, and then. I don't know who Massacre is, but Massacre on drums. All right. I don't know what's going on. My audio cut out again. So oh, I'm going to okay. go. Okay. No worries. I'm going to do mine and then leave the room again. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, man. That's okay. Okay. Number six. In the Forest of Lurking Evil from this year. From... March 4th, 2022. Um, there's just nothing weak on here. It's a short album. It's under a half hour. But everything is awesome. And I would rather have, you know, a 27-minute album where everything is great and you just want to start listening to it again than have, like, a 50-minute album where half of it's good. Yeah, so, I agree. No, uh, no complaints for me on it being short. It's just, it's freaking awesome all the way through. Uh, I really like Warbound is freaking great. Just a mid paced headbanger. Um, Eater of the Dead has those cool guitar harmonies that I was talking about that I really like. Yeah. Uh, the title track is awesome. There's just nothing, there's nothing weak on here. It's, it's solid all the way through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my number six from this year. So, wow. Okay, so he's going to come back here in a second. So my number, where are we at? My number five, our lists are, are pretty different, um, which, is, which is cool. I like this era of the band a little bit more than Scott does. But number five, got Abyss Sorcery. Um, this one came out after the Hell's Headbanger years, but this was self-released. I like this one a lot, and I like I, I actually like Cam Lee's artwork quite a bit. This might be the best Grave Worm cover Cam Lee did, but I really like the... Uh, the black metal witch or whatever on the front. I think that's really, really awesome. Um, I like this album. It is, it is a successor to Infernal Minions, if I remember correctly. Uh, not, yeah, this came out right after Infernal Minions, which I like Infernal Minions a ton. Uh, so this album, it sounds a little bit similar to that, less keys and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think this, this album's pretty much as good as that. I just, Maybe I don't like it as much, but yeah, I really like Cam Lee's artwork. Um, I, I could see him doing more Grave Worm covers. You know, his style, 
his style just fits. I don't know. It just fits Grey Worm. I like how he's maybe he's not the best artist in the world, but I think his, I think his, you know, sort of primitive style. I just think it's awesome. I, I could totally see Cam doing more, uh, more album covers. I don't know what other album covers he's done. I know he's not a full-time artist or anything, but you know, he's a talented dude. And I, yeah, I, I, I dig his work a lot. There's a patch you can get. You get a patch with this, with this album cover on it. If you, if you like it as much as I do. So let's see, let me bring Scott back. All right, you're back. <laughs> All right. I went and got an external speaker, so we'll see if that helps. Yeah, I, I it might just be the uh it might it's I I've seen people have live stream issues all the time. So it's it's probably a stream yard thing. It's probably not your your end. Okay. But my all number right. five, since you didn't see it, my number five was Abyss Sorcery. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. Yeah. yeah, we're not far off on that. Oh yeah, yeah, not too far then. All right. My number five was my first Grey Worm. I'll show the album to be cool. Do it. Blood of the Pentagram. Whoa, on vinyl. I never saw that on vinyl. I, I, I got this from Kevin. <laughs> Dang, I didn't, that's awesome. At the time, I didn't. It's just black vinyl, so I won't pull it out. But yeah. um, That's, that's yeah. cool. This was like... I've been listening to metal, you know, since I was a teenager, but it was all pretty commercial-ish kind of stuff. Um, and I remember hearing this for the first time on like a Hell's Hibbinger comp, and it was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't know what it was. Now now I can't figure out why, but it seemed just so challenging to me. Like, it sounded so weird to me. <laughs> um, and I mean, it is raw, but listen to it now, I was like, what the, what was my problem? But yeah, that was my first. So it was my it's this my sentimental number one, but ended up not being my number one. Um, yeah. It's got a lot of kind of varied tempos that uh, compared to the earlier albums. Um, True, and has those guitar harmonies I like so much. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's I mean it's it's twelve songs, but they're all friggin' great. They um are. Goat Command, the opener, I like a whole lot. Yeah, me too. Blood of the Pentagram, friggin' awesome. Um Two Coins for Caron. Uh that has keys on it that I really liked. So I don't hate keys. I don't know. That one it was like uh it gave me like a dungeon synth kind of feeling. <clears throat> I'm not a huge Dungeon Synth fan, but I don't know. That's just what it made me think of. Um, but yeah, this is like this and another album to me is like this is like Grey Worms arrived. This is Grey Worm. Like, there's no more yeah, I agree. kind of moving forward, moving back. Like, we're there. True. Yeah, I that that was that wasn't the first Grey Worm like material I ever heard, but that was the first one that I like ever bought and actually owned. So I guess you could kind of say that's when I, when I started to get into the band because the you know, the first couple of times I heard it, I guess I was kind of like you where I was like, ah, this isn't, this isn't really my thing. You know, it was, it was like yeah. so raw and so primitive. And I, I guess I, I wasn't listening to that stuff as much at the time, which now I, now I listen to that kind of stuff a lot, but my, Number five, you're going to find this one kind of funny because my number five is Funeral Empire. <laughs> um, this came I'm out reporting in, this video. <laughs> came out in 2009 on Time Before Time. And I, I do agree with you on a lot, though. It, 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 it is too long. It has too many songs. It, it's cool that it has the live songs at the end of it just for a bonus. But uh, yeah, if this were maybe 10 songs... It, it would rank a lot higher. I just love the, uh, I just love the kind of the riffing style that he, that he kind of, I don't know if I'd say he started on this album, but that riffing style that he did where it's just simple riffing, but super catchy. Um, I'm not sure what it is that I like about this album so much. I guess my only, I love the riffs. My only complaint though, is like you said, the length. Um, other than that, it's yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just Kevin by himself on this album, which isn't isn't rare by any means. But uh, yeah, I like this album quite a bit. All 
All right. Man, we're getting down to it. We are. My number four, Black Fire 2010. Yeah. Earlier 2010. What was it? I don't know. Doesn't matter. This is April. <laughs> Blood Pentagram was October or something. Yeah. Um, this is on Time Before Time. And it makes sense. I'm glad Kevin told us that all that split stuff was recorded after Fear yeah. Empire. Because I was like, how did he go from like my least favorite to one of my favorites in like six months? So, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, so a lot of my notes were comparing this Funeral Empire, and now it doesn't make sense because they were years apart. Yeah. Um. But this Fallen Upon the Shores of Inferno, the the opener, and then Eternal Slumber following it up is just like that one-two punch of you start an album out with two friggin' awesome songs you're like all right man i'm in like let's go and, I, yeah i love it it's it's awesome and this yeah this to me i mean up to this point i put it's the best album so far and i've got it at number four so i think it's one of their best ever um i think so too savage damage is on here they originally and then they re-recorded it later but yeah it's just this is one to seek out for sure i agree yeah that one stands out a lot too. I'm not sure what what he was what exactly he was thinking at the time because it it's there's stuff on there that doesn't sound like anything he did earlier or even later. Really, it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. And I think I also screwed up on my my numbering system because I think I totally did not include. I don't think I included Night Creatures on my list at all. Oh, okay. Going, I was going through this and I I don't think I see it on here. So I yeah, I thought I was ahead there. of you, and then you were ahead of me, so I didn't know <laughs> yeah. if I was wrong or what. Yeah. So I guess I'll just skip that one, or maybe I'll talk. I don't know. I, I can't remember where I where I planned on putting it anyways. That's a bummer. Um, I like that one a lot, though. I just I, I think I've only listened to that one once or twice even so far. Sometimes I'm pretty slow with re-listening to albums. I always do, but sometimes I'm really late to do it. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll just do, I guess I'll just be on number three. Um, so this is going to be kind of a shock to you because I like it a lot, but Infernal Minions from okay. uh, yeah, 2013, Hell's Head Banger Records. I know you, you said you didn't like the Cam Lee cover too much. What do you think about the back? Do you like the back? Um, I like the back better than the front. Yeah, I, I, I actually love the back. I don't, it reminds me of like Gremlins or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have the shirt. Uh, I have the shirt that has these guys on it. And I just, I wear that thing all the time. Um, so this one has yeah blood on blood's back. He's playing bass. He did all the all the synth stuff on here, which is awesome. Um, well, to me, not to you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I love the synth stuff he did on here. I, I actually thought that was really cool. And you got Tony Black on drums here too. Um, shit, what what band was Tony Black from? I should know. Is he in Druid Lord? Or am I... I thought he was in Druid Lord. I might be... It sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, Tony Black on drums. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind... Uh, I wouldn't mind some more keys, but like I said, you know, I wouldn't want it... Uh, it's it's never going to turn into like a symphonic band, but if, if he did another album with some keys on there, I'd, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't hate, I don't hate the idea of keys. I don't know, just it didn't work for me on that album. And you know, no, it's I'm, I'm, by, I'm by no means an authority. It's just, <laughs> yeah, no one, just no one, one is. Guy. Yeah. All right, let's see, what do I got? Number three, I got funeral rights, 2020. I oh, so never, un so never Kevin, unsleeve Kevin on camera. Shit. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> oh shit, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, I freaking love this album. Um, and I was, you know, there aren't. There was happy this one got a vinyl release. Yeah. Um, and just because I'm a collector scum. <laughs> <laughs> I got the test pressing too. <laughs> oh shit. That's awesome. Wow, look at that. Um yeah, I mean, after this was the follow-up to Dread Knight, which 
I didn't like near as much as you did. Um, and Yet. like, what a what a friggin' <laughs> bounce back for me. Yeah. Uh, Gates of Darkness, the opener. Um, Kevin's vocals are like more of a viciousness in this one than than he sometimes has, which which I really enjoyed. Um, the, an Elder Tale made me think of Sabbath for some reason. Cool. Um, Island of Sirens has uh, Dawn of the Dead and Noah Buchanan, who's also a Nunslaughter now on guest folks. Yes. Um, and then Darkness is My Destiny, the closer, is just, it's so freaking great. It's one of those, like, uh, one of those songs that ends an album that makes you just want to just hit play again and just listen to the whole thing over. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it really makes me happy that, you know, a band with, well, geez, when did they? When were the original demos? Like early '90s. And yeah, this is like '92, '95. Yeah. 2020, and they put out like one of my top three albums. Like that's awesome. So it is. Yeah, like I said, um, I like that one a lot too. Like considering I've listened to it one time and I put it at number ten, you know, I'll, I'll probably like it more over the, yeah. over the next couple of years. So yeah, apparently yeah. So Tony Black was in Equinox. I don't know if you ever heard them. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then Druid Lord. Yep, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Equinox are awesome. Really underrated. Are they Florida? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're they're great. So uh, I guess we're at number two. Um, I kind of wanted this one to be my number one. And it, it actually might be this <laughs> my number one might just be a tie. But uh yeah, so I got Black Fire. Nice. Um yeah, 2010, Time Before Time Records. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, Zyklon on bass and bass and contributing vocals, I think. Uh, maybe background vocals or something, but not 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 lead vocals. Um, I know you were, you were talking earlier about other people doing vocals in Grave Worm, and I, I agree. I, I think maybe the Kevin's vocals might be almost my favorite part of Grave Worm. Like, yeah. I've just associated, uh, you know, his that sound with with Grave Worm to the point where I, I don't really need to hear anyone else do vocals. Although guest vocals would be kind of fun, but I, I wouldn't, I would never care to hear someone like taking over the lead vocal position or something. No, like, no, either. Yeah, um, pretty like I don't, I don't think I've ever really heard another. I, I don't think I could compare it to another singer. Maybe like the kind of like the guy from Beharit. Maybe I don't know. Oh yeah, I didn't thought of that. That's 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 good. Yeah, that's maybe the only comparison I could come up with. But yeah, I I like this album a lot. It might be not, might be, it could be my number one, but it might just kind of be a tie. But uh, yeah, just the fact that there's stuff on here that it's just so unique sounding, it stands out a lot from the rest of the albums. Well, it's not gonna be. Uh... Not going to be much uh, drama for number one, it looks like, right? For both of us? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll go to my number two then. The Shadowlands 2017. Cool. It's, yeah, I don't know what it is, man. It's such a, it has such a cool, like, occult atmosphere to it. And it, it sounds like an album, not like, you know, a bunch of songs, which is fine. But this sounds like, I don't know if it's a concept or not, but it sounds like it should be if it's not. Like, it sounds like it all goes together. Um, I think it kind of does, if I I could be wrong. Is there? Okay. Yeah, I think it is kind of a concept album. And maybe it's a loose concept. I'm not sure, but I think it is. I think there is, like, a story going on on that album. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. Everything's good on this. It's hard. It, just picking stuff out is hard, but... Evil in the Night, it's like this. If Grave Worm is a, a top 10 hit, it's Evil in the Night. Like, it's such an earworm. <laughs> it's so yeah, great. It is. Uh, the title track is great, like Grave Worm style Doom. Yes. Bewitched by the Pentagram, Shadow Lord. It's. There's nothing bad on here. No. I mean, and it's. Yeah. It's my number two. So I think it rolls. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd be cool to do a, another album, like do an album called return to the shadowlands and do like a sequel to it i think yeah it'd be pretty cool yeah you know like other bands have done stuff like that i think it'd be i think it'd be awesome 
So number one, obviously, uh, 2015's uh, Doom to Eternity. <laughs> yeah, Hell's Head, Headbanger Records. This was, yeah, this was another one of the albums that just kind of like has numerous non-slaughter guys. Um, yep, yeah, Jim Kanye on drums and Von Sligow on bass, who was, I'm pretty sure that was uh, Nunslaughter's bass player. Okay. Um, I always liked this album, even from the start, but I, I'll say even that, like, I just liked it when it came out, but, like, uh, over the last couple of weeks, so I've been listening to it more, and now it just kind of became my number one, like, within the last week. Yeah, like, before, I, for the longest time, I think Blood of the Pentagram was my number one for, like, the last, at least the last five or ten years. But, uh, yeah, Grave Worm, or uh, it Doomed to Eternity, yeah, this album is just so cool, like, Kanye's drums, and there seems to be, like, an energy on here that's unique to this album. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, if without, without doing any work, if you'd asked me what my favorite one was, it would probably, I would, might have said this, I, but I probably would have said Blood of the Pentagram because it was my first. Yeah. But I think it's this one. Um, and I was thinking, well, is it sentimental? Like, because of Jim being on it, but I, no, it's just friggin' awesome. Yeah. The, it sounds, it sounds great. Um, all the songs offer something a little different. Uh, this is like, if, if I want somebody to listen to Grave Worm, this is what I tell them to listen to. Um, Good point. <laughs> Shiny Megleam, the opener. I just wrote, let's fucking go. <laughs> it just fires me up, man. It's like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're in it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, you could tell that you, there, you could tell there was inspiration for that album. Like, yeah, there was, you know, people feeling inspired, I think is the way I describe it. Yeah. Um, and this was well, this this came out after, obviously, but Grave Worm played Hell's Head Bash 2 with Jim. And that's the only time I've seen Grave Worm. I don't you know, I saw him play for 25 minutes or whatever. And yeah, <clears throat> hoping hoping to see him live someday. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah, man, I really wanted to go to one of those head bashes, but I just never made it over. Well, yeah, I mean, for you, it'd be a bit of a, it's a car yeah. ride for me, kind of long, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, over, out of all, like, the festivals, like, I I wanted to go to head bash. To me, it was even more appealing than, like, MDF, so. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it was like a miniature version of MDF. Like, I don't, MDF just sounds so overwhelming, like. Yeah. Ooh. Too many bands. Too many bands. And I, I, I haven't been either, but from what I've heard, it sounds like a lot of hangers-ons and people just doing it to do it. And, you know, oh, no I'm one's sure. going to Hell's Head Bash to be cool. Like, <laughs> you're no. going there because you like it, you know? Yeah. I I, I, don't, I wonder if they'll do another Head Bash. I've heard that the two that they did, I, I, I've i heard they had, they were, they were like the guys, the Hell's Head, Headbanger guys. I guess they enjoyed it and... Um, I don't know. I think it didn't. I don't think they made a lot of money. I think is what I heard. Like, I think it was like a barely, like a literally, like a break even type thing. So it was like yeah. a, a ton of work for you know very little reward. For but early, it'd be cool if they do. Yeah, the if they did a, Yeah, I don't know. I still hope they do another one someday. They've been or have you watched uh, Justin's YouTube channel? The one yeah, I, guys. I I do. <laughs> that guy's that guy's a uh, uh, that guy's hilarious, but. Uh, <laughs> I he's haven't been, seen he's the brought last up few. that he's brought up that they're they're talking about it. So oh, okay. He wants to do like a scaled down. Don't bring in a million bands from overseas and then see how it goes. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Just keep because it, keep it two to was friggin'. That was crazy how many people they flew in and yeah, I can't imagine how they made anything off that. Like yeah, <clears throat> the first yeah. one was my favorite though. <laughs> that was just at their warehouse. <laughs> Oh yeah, I need to it get was... those DVDs. I know they have DVDs for both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one was cool. It. Just pulled in. You went, drove to butt fuck nowhere. Pulled into this like storage facility, or not storage, but like industrial warehouse facility where they have their warehouse and yeah, just hung out and drank beer and watched Nun Slaughter and Acid Witch and Midnight and shit fucker for free. Yeah, were they all? So they were all Hell's Headbanger bands, right? I believe. Uh, 
I could be wrong. That one, the, the second, like the real, um, I think they all were. The third one wasn't. Oh, okay. They had some, I like Morbidizad, I think was on there. Oh, okay. Bramble Isles Key. Like they had someone not, not Hell of Bangers bands, but like affiliated. True. But yeah. I can't remember. Did, did Deceased ever play? Or am I thinking of something else? They did. They played. They played the oh, okay. the second one, which was you know the real one, the real first one. Okay. And and October thirty one played too, so that was fun. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, wait, deceased? They're on Hell's Headbangers nowadays, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah, I was gonna say deceased aren't on that label, but yeah, they are as of the last. I think maybe at least one or two albums. Um, yeah, I, I'm a big deceased fan, so I usually follow what they do. Yeah, me too. Me too. I don't know if they did it. If they did another one, maybe, maybe I'd make it. I don't know. I'd love to see. It just seems cool. I would love to meet. I'd love to meet. You know, all those guys and uh, all the Hell's Headbanger guys. And I don't know. It'd be cool to see Cleveland. I've never been to Cleveland. <laughs> well, <laughs> the the area they had it in, uh, I wouldn't suggest going to. <laughs> <laughs> not the not the best part of Cleveland. No, no. Uh, there's there's one hotel that was like in walking distance of the Agora where they had it. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so I got a room there and I was, you know, there's like a Facebook group of people talking about, oh, don't stay there. It's a shithole. I got bed bugs. And I was like, oh, shit. whatever, you pussies. Like, we're just going there to sleep and who cares? And that was that weekend I put as the end of my thinking I'm a teenager. Because it was fucking sketchy. We walk, walking back, you know, it was like a two block walk to the hotel. And you're looking over your shoulder the whole time. You get to the hotel. It's full of cars that are running and people milling around doing. Well, you probably know what they're doing, but yeah, <laughs> people with no business being there. And then the second night, someone got shot outside the hotel. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I was like, oh, oh OK, God. Yeah, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah. I was that the first head bash or was that the second one? That was the first one that was like the multi day. Oh, okay. The first one was just the thing at their warehouse that was just like one afternoon. Yeah, they probably learned their lesson on that one. I'm I'm assuming <laughs> they 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 had it there the next year. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't I didn't go. I only went one of the nights. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw some of the footage. It looked pretty badass. Like uh, I I watched the uh, Pro Fanatica stuff. That looked pretty awesome. Yeah, I I pushed out of that one. It was there yeah. at the end of the night, and it was they were like a half hour late getting on stage, and I was like, "Fuck oh, you guys, man. I'm tired." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would be too. I'd, I I wouldn't be able to. I, it's just tiring. Like I've been to like all day metal fest where, yeah, like that the last half I'm just like dehydrated and I'm just like exhausted. My ears yeah. hurt, and yeah, I don't know. There I, was I think a, I like the idea more. There was a pre-show the night the the thursday night and then a full day friday starting at like noon noon to midnight or one and then i think pro fanatical headlined the second night and that was noon to whatever and yeah i was i was over it <laughs> so yeah it sucks because like you're you're watching you're listening to music you like watching bands you like but your motivation is just like dead <laughs> yeah yeah I yep. can't remember which which head bash it was. Was it one of the head bashes where apparently Pro Fanatica were like terrible live? <laughs> I think it was one of those. I heard that about that show. Like they came out and did just a bunch of weird, like didn't even play songs. But I didn't see it, so I don't know. I yeah. heard they. I heard one, one of them they were bad, and then the next one I've heard they were awesome again. So I guess they. I think they oh, hadn't okay. played. They. I think they hadn't been playing live for a while. So I think it was. I think they were pretty rusty at one point, but. Yeah, I regret it now, but you know, at the time, you're in a friggin' non-air conditioned building in the dead of summer in Cleveland, and it's hot, and you, you've been sweating your ass off all day. Everything smells like, oh yeah, and the only food to eat was was uh, euros because there was a euro truck outside, oh. so everything smelled like ball sweat and like yogurt <laughs> <laughs> greek greek food yeah you know, yeah so I was like, i'm i want to get out of here man <laughs> yeah yeah if you're gonna do it in the summertime you gotta have some kind of ventilation or yeah. air conditioning something 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> wow. I but can't believe was, we did that. Yeah. Hey. Hour I mean, and a half. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. I, a couple things I regret, but it's okay. I wish I had a, I thought I had it down. I thought it was, I thought my list was going to be fine, but now I'm like, ah, oh, now I just feel bad for like some of the, some of the rankings, but what can you do? Yeah, I mean, like like I said, like a half hour before we started, I was like, "This is this this list is bullshit." I got to do it all over. <laughs> and I, was like, I know, whatever, just do it. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine in another five years, there'll there will be ten more albums. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no, I, 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 at this rate, I mean, I'm not sure if there really will be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't mind two albums a year. I, I'm fine with it. No, no, I don't at all. I don't either. Um, I'm always excited for the new one, and mm -hmm. and rarely am I disappointed. So, yeah, yeah. If you want to put I'm out two sure years, he's been writing good. stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's been writing stuff lately. So, oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, I could make it three this then. year. It could be. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There was three albums, wasn't there? Were there? Oh, no, there's only no. There were two. Sorry. Oh no, I was saying maybe they'll be three this year. <laughs> it's it's possible. You never know. But uh, anyways, yeah, I think we'll uh, I think we'll call it good. I've I've leave my air conditioning off this whole time, and it's pretty hot okay. in here. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's too loud. I didn't want it, I didn't want people people to hear just white noise behind me the whole time. Yep, got you. Well, anyways, hey man, thanks man. for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think honestly, you did better than I did. You're better. You're better than I am at like uh, dissecting stuff. I'm not so good at like you know oh, taking stop. things apart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if uh, I think you did better than me, so yeah. Well, anyways, man, we'll have to come up with another idea one of these days and uh, and do something else. All right, sounds good, man. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for everyone watching, and uh, have a good one, guys. Thanks. See you, Scott. See you.